Hi, this is Terry. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, just got done getting a lecture from Ray on not... I'm gonna murder you. I know where you sleep. <laughs> ah, yes. Anyway, so uh, today's topic, unfortunately, is a pretty tough topic. So if you like the lighter ones, uh, this is not one, but I think this is incredibly important. Uh, you have to know, if you know me at all, that I was going to circle back around on um, the passing of the notorious RBG. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how you all are doing. I just know that Friday night when I was working with a client until 9.30 at night and unable to drink, that it made for a uh, kind of a rough evening. It's probably better that I didn't. I was numb when I read the news because I was like, of course, it's fucking 2020. And 2020 bingo. And um, I have to say that while I was sad because she was an amazing woman that did so much, um, it, it just amazing. But I also became very scared very quickly because of who's in the White House, because of Mitch McConnell, and because of this massive fucking power grab um and i really see that we are i mean our our democracy is um is it's there's really a question is whether our democracy is going to succeed or if it's going to fail and um our, our rights our human rights that i just ah oh, there's there's just so much here i think back to a couple times in my life when there were like big things that happened and remembering where um where i was so for example in the 1989 earthquake i remember exactly where i was since i was at home in castor valley with my uh with my mom watching what happened and then seeing the results around the san francisco bay area and the impact and you know so that was a pretty critical monumental time in my life and then uh, 9-11, I remember exactly where I was for that. Somebody asked me on the tennis court if I was old enough to remember when um, JFK died. And no, I was born in 1970, so no, I don't remember that. Um, and then the next time that was really monumental was in the, the 2016 elections. And I remember exactly where I was because I was with um, my now friend, Susan Sierriota, who has a company called Waggett. And she was pitching at an event um, that I was providing feedback on. It was the Sand Hill Angels event. And I remember the, the presentations were happening and we were monitoring what was happening with the results from um, the election. And Susan was starting to panic. And I said, don't worry, it's early. They haven't taken into account the West Coast. And I was like, we're, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. And not realizing that we weren't going to be fine. And I hit a point where it was like, oh, shit. We are, Trump is going to get elected. And what the hell is going to happen to the country? What is going to happen to us as women? What is going to happen to anyone who is uh, not part of the, the white supremacist cis movement? And at one point I had to, um, somebody was pitching and they wanted my feedback and I just said, I'm sorry, I gotta go home. I said, I'm not listening, I'm not paying attention because I'm really afraid of what is going to happen to our country as a result of this election. And I know that there are a number of us who knew at that time that we were on the brink of disaster for our country and right now we're seeing it. We're seeing it in terms of the COVID response, we're seeing it in terms of the attacks on uh, civil liberties and human rights and how um, if you don't fit a certain profile, you don't matter and you don't count. And um, and now it's, you know, while a number of us, um, like on Friday night, were absolutely devastated and uh, over the weekend mourned for the loss of not only just an amazing woman, but what uh, is possible within our country um, and seeing what is truly happening, um, that it's time to fight and it's time to fight really fucking hard. So if you are not currently in this fight, we, a number of us, uh, were very complacent, uh, in 2016 thinking that, you know, we were all good citizens and we we're community, um, contributing in our community. We were paying our taxes. We were, you know, trying to do a good job raising our kids. We thought that was enough and realized that it, it wasn't. 
And if over the last four years uh, that hasn't activated you or catalyzed you, uh, and I probably I probably hasn't catalyzed me enough, uh, now's the time to really start to take action. So the question is, how, how does one do that? And I have been asking around and collecting some ideas on what it is that we can be doing. I am I'm totally thrilled to see all the posts on social media about people uh, being a part of the letter writing campaigns, the postcard campaigns, and now making the phone calls to the senators, uh, putting pressure on them to hold off on um, allowing for any sort of vote or voting in favor of any sort of um, SCOTUS nominee that uh, you know is is put up during um, until after the elections and after uh, the new president is in place. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to something in the description for uh, who to call, what the numbers are, and um, so you know have a little script. My mom even made a whole bunch of phone calls today, and in fact, she forwarded something over to me in addition to somebody else forwarding something to me, and so I'm gonna pull that together. There's also something called Landslide, and um, the website is landslide2020.org. I will go ahead and include a link to um, my crew, so you can join my crew, and then you can create your own crews. What research has shown that um, we that we need to get people out to vote, and we can apply pressure, um, positive peer pressure, on our friends to uh, to get out and to vote. And so I heard about this um, this uh, this application, and it, it and this organization. It's a nonprofit organization, so I'm going to give them a little money in order to support it. Uh, but really it is just to make sure that people register to vote that and I think today when this comes out it is like National Voter Registration Day so if you have not registered to vote that's the first thing you need to do is register to vote and the second is to decide if you're going to register or you're going to vote in person or through mail-in slash absentee ballot same exact thing uh, I think here in California, we are all um, able to vote via absentee ballot. I have not gone to a polling station in years, but uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. But landslide2020.org, um, join my crew, and then um, try to get other people out to vote. So it's definitely an easy, easy way to um, to do something. For those of us who are feeling incredibly powerless, these are some actions that make us uh, will make us feel like we can claim some power and you know make some changes in our world. Uh, we can start donating money. There are a number of different senators, uh, like uh, Amy McGrath, who's going up against uh, Mitch McConnell. She's behind, but let's throw some more money at her. Person who is running against Susan Collins in I think it's Maine, throw some money at them. Harrison is going against uh, Lindsey Graham. Let's get some money into that campaign. Um, one way to do that is either direct or there are various different organizations that will allocate it. One of them is Act Blue. So if you can donate money to Act Blue, then they will then send money to various different Democratic um, nom uh, d Democrats who are in the running for certain uh, races. There's also some, uh, you can volunteer to work at the polling places. So in the past, there have been older people who have worked in the polling stations with COVID. Right now, that's a little bit challenging, and so they're not necessarily there. So I would like to really see a bunch of our Gen Z folks. A lot of um, people in middle college and my friends are registering to do that. Can you um, Can you do that? Yeah. So I'm going to sign up to do that. So we'll go ahead and include a link to that in the description as well so that if you have Gen Z kids, get them to volunteer and let's get them because this will help to activate them. If they're over 18, make sure your kids are voting. I know Adam was reluctant. My son Adam was reluctant to register to vote. His ex-girlfriend got him to register to vote. Thank you, Sophie. And uh, now it's a matter of me pressuring the shit out of him to make sure that he does vote and that he understands that his vote matters. Every vote matters. Um, some other organizations that I've been told about are, um, sorry about this, there's the Movement Voter Project, which um, funds local organizing. I'll put a link to that in the description. Another one is People's Action, and I'll put a link to that. Um, vote Save America. So I think, uh, I know... God, did I do? A, I might have done a letter writing campaign through Vote Save America. 
Uh, one of the other things that I'm going to look into is there's there's massive voter suppression going on um, uh, by the Republican Party. They're basically trying to make it so that the fewer people that vote, the fewer Democrats that vote, the that vote, the better off that they're going to be. And so in Florida, um, convicted felons are not able to vote if they have any sort of fines. So I'm wondering if I, I'm going to find the organization that is taking money and then paying down some of those fines and making it so that those folks can now vote. They have served their time, they have paid for their crime, and they should have the opportunity to vote. And it is purely voter suppression to keep those folks from being able to vote by saying they can't do so without um, without paying those fines. And it's all sorts of stuff has been going on. Um, and that's all been caught up in uh, litigation. I'm not sure if you've been following it, but um, it's it's incredibly frustrating and demoralizing as to what's happening in so many places to keep people from being getting access to vote. Um, the reduction in the number of polling places. So we need to be loud. There are some marches. Um, I've joined a couple of Facebook groups and um, there are some marches that are going to be happening. And if you're worried about COVID, you know, just as you thought with the Black Lives Matter marches and protests, etc. If you were concerned about that, well, like back in June when I was talking about this, we went down to downtown Redwood City to go to a uh, a protest, um, a very civil protest, because uh, we decided that the police brutality, and the killing of people by the police and um, Black Lives Matter, that we needed to make sure that our voices were heard um, in support of Black Lives Matter and in opposition to the police brutality, and I and we weighed whether which was which was more more important, you know, staying safe from COVID or um, protecting the the rights and standing up for people who were not being protected. And we decided that the people counted, the people mattered, and I think that's going to be the same here. And right now, it's not just fighting for individuals; it's fighting for our democracy. This is we have so much at stake. And if you're not paying attention because you don't want to, um, then you are complicit. You need to take action. And I know that sounds really harsh, uh, but at this point, doing nothing means that we are enabling uh, what is happening in the White House, what is happening with Mitch McConnell refusing to take up the thousands of bills up for vote in the Senate and the the intentional destruction um, of of our democracy as a result of not allowing for the 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 way that our country was set up with the legislative processes practices and the separation of the judicial branch branch the executive branch and the legislative branch and um, it's that our time is now <sighs> that was a lot. Ray, anything? Because you, you read and pay attention to all sorts of different things, so what have I missed? Um, yeah, we just need to start telling people to get off their asses and, and vote and support what's right and denounce what's wrong, um, which we have our views about what's right and wrong. Other people have their views. I'm not telling you what is right or wrong, but just stand up for what you believe in. Well, and also think about what, um, you know, I imagine that most people watching this are going to be more in line with my, my political leanings than not. Um, I, if you don't believe that all people should have the same rights, then you can just stop watching now because um, we don't, uh, we should all have the same rights. It doesn't matter if you are a man or a woman or other. It doesn't matter what color of your skin is. I don't care what your religion is. I really don't care what your political leaning is as long as you uh, respect that we all deserve the same rights. and. Roe versus Wade is going to be in question, um, which means those of us who have money or those of us who are in states that uh, allow for abortion access and reproductive choice for women and men, um, you know, we're going to be fine. But we really need to stand up for the others in the other states who are not going to have the same rights and privileges. And, um, you know, ugh, I mean, obviously, 
I am very fired up about this and I want you to get fired up about it too. Do what you can. I am going to start, you know, tonight I want to sit with Ray and we're just going to do, go spend a little bit of money and support some campaigns and that's the easiest thing to do. Oh, and another easy thing to do is make sure you register to vote. And with that, because we're at just about 15 minutes, thank you for... Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you think somebody else needs to hear this, please share this with them. Um, I am trying to get to 200 subscribers by the end of the year. Uh, I think uh, some of the things that I have to say, other people need to hear. So share it with them, please. And with that, anything? We're all done. <sighs> have a good Tuesday. Um, Let's send some goodness and some love out into the world, and um, we will get through this if we come together and uh, fight and fight and fight, because we can. So uh, with that, take some risks, let go of perfection, and above all else, have some fun.